Um, and uh, so, yeah, this is why I, I love wellness. Um, I am, uh, my name is Dieta. I was a former elementary school teacher and library lady and school counselor over a 30 year career. And um, as I moved along in my career, I realized things like you really need to stop and eat lunch every day. You can't just keep going. Uh, those of you who maybe have colleagues or friends that are teachers, um, you know that they never take anything off of the teacher's platter on what to share with people, young people. They always give them another something, something, you know, to learn uh, and, and to do and to be in charge of. And so you are not only the teacher and the person that's supposed to impart uh, and train those critical minds and that creativity and that collaboration and that um, communication, you are also supposed to be the judge and the jury and the mama and the daddy and the nurse and the in that you know in the during COVID you were even the keeper of the the um, mask and a mask enforcer you know it so um, I learned quickly that I did better in the library role in the um, uh, uh, counselor role if I stopped and ate lunch because. I would eat lunch as a teacher, even though you might not do it, but in five or 10 minutes, but I would eat lunch uh, because my kids were gonna eat lunch. Um, but uh, when you become those supportive roles, you tend to be on and everybody's planning period is at a different, you're on whenever people walk in the door, you're on, you know, um, and whether you've had lunch or not. So um, I've learned that I also, um, didn't need to work a half day, which a half day means you go in at seven and then you get off at seven, right? Uh, you don't have to do half days, right? You can, you can leave at a, you know, and that you can do things with other people besides your teacher friends and talk other things besides shop um, on the weekend. And I imagine in the church, that's probably pretty also common that your friends are all those people you do ministry with. And so you tend to maybe talk shop a lot, lots, you know, instead of bunko or what, or whatever uh, the other fun things are that you need to do to um, be dance in the kitchen or be that well-rounded meow, meow, meow self. Like if uh, Pastor Justin, I have to tell you how you could take a song and meow, meow it out. <laughs> all right. So I would like to introduce um, some ideas today. Um, that we'll call self for body, <laughs> self for body, self for body care. So in other words, you can, this, this whole idea of self-care, it's really everybody's got to do it and everybody benefits. So you can't help the other person if you're not taking care of yourself. So this is self for body care. <laughs> uh, you know, I make up a word to make it, make, what I feel like we need to communicate and and to hold on to. And goodwill is very good to me. Not only like, you know, did I get my here we come to save the day shirt there. Um, but I also found this really cool shirt that I have no idea where it comes from in the world, but it takes the wellness wheel. And I know that's hard to see, but it's putting occupational health down there, financial health. It also puts down cultural health, which I think is pretty um, interesting as another way to be healthy. Um, but it is, it is it's it's not a one thing right it's not like a physical thing only it's what's happening in your heart and your head well, the heart and the head and your brains and your body uh, and your relationships like someone has already mentioned um i think pastor sylvie you said that right your relationships if something's not going right in any of those worlds of you if money isn't good if if um you know if you don't feel safe uh you know, uh, everything else is going to be out of whack too. So how can we find balance and how can we really um, help ourselves? Well, we're designed to look for danger. That's how we've evolved in, and survived all these many years. If you didn't know to run really fast when the saber tooth cat was on the horizon, you wouldn't be, right? Your ancestors. So we're, we're, we have a brain that's built like a Velcro instead of Teflon. And so we hold on to negative, like the Velcro sticks. And that's how we survive. Um, but we need to get better um, with the positives and the things that are well. Those things just kind of flush away like Teflon, like it doesn't stick. 
And we have to sometimes go looking for those things that are going right. Oh, I have a great place to spend the night tonight. Oh, I have a meal for supper. Um, don't need to worry about that. There's clean clothes. There's a way to get clothes clean for tomorrow. And it's those little tiny things that make us mighty, right? Oh, all right. And very strong. So I'd like to introduce some things today that are in your own circle of control. And I always love to take my hula hoop when we think about that, right? And um, if there's any luck, uh, maybe, maybe I got real lucky with, oh, can you see? Where are you? All right, so I'm going to hold it up high. But the idea is that you can hold it. Oh, you can't see it. I'm still doing it. <laughs> we believe. How, how many people are inside the hula hoop? And you answer. Yes, and you are in charge of you. And just like Sarah expressed, and I hear your pain because I have it going on at my house too. Um, you cannot fix anybody else. You can only be in charge of you. And I would teach my little people, I'm in charge of what I think, where I look, what I say, how I feel, and what I do. That's it. And then my, my choices may influence other people's choices, but I can't make other people make a right choice, you know? Um, and so uh, only you can do is model it, right? And modeling is a beautiful strategy because when you're healthy and strong, people notice and they see your light shining bright and they want in on that. So that's your best way. Uh, the other quote that I really love is a Beth Moore quote that is about sometimes you just hold it broke when it's these other folks. Um, you just hold it, you just beside them, right? And you can walk with people. Um, and some people's, you know, uh, point of where they hit the bottom is really low. Like I keep thinking that, you know, they'll hit the rock bottom and they'll, you know, we say you look up and finally you see God, Woo you know, but some people's low is pretty low um, about where they go before they actually begin to work and take those self-care, self for body choices uh, for themselves. So today, what we want to do for self for body care is to think about the cranial nerve number 12. So cranial nerve number 12 is your vagal vagus nerve. Um, and it is actually uh, like the very first uh, nervous system of the body. Uh, so like when a baby is knitted in mama's womb, you know, this is something that is the first uh, way and you you're familiar with this even if you're not familiar with this because it starts at the um it starts in the head and moves all the way down through your um like by the eyes face nose into the um uh, uh chest cavity into the belly and into your gut right and and you just have to google use some vagal nerve uh, pictures um to see it for yourself it affects so many things when you get the butterflies in your tummy that's your vagus nerve at work. Um, when um, uh, I had a lady today that I was working with that was so upset about something, she was in and out of the bathroom, right? You know, that that's your vagus nerve. Uh, and so it's one of those, because it's a part of that like brain stem, you know, it's one of those things you cannot talk to it. You cannot be rational with it. It's like the amygdala which is like these little tiny um, almond shaped pieces in our brain, in the brainstem area too. We call that your downstairs brain. Oh, got a glare. Oh, there you go. And, and the amygdala is like your security guard and it's designed to find when there's trouble, you know, like, oh, that stick looks like a snake. <laughs> it's a snake, let's get out of here, right? Like it's designed to care for you. But the problem is that we don't use the prefrontal cortex. Um, the part of this is right behind the, um, the the forehead we don't use that part of ourselves which is the wise leader we're too busy listening to the amygdala that's down there going danger run this is really scary you know like um we need it to calm down so that's a vagal nerve type thing so what can we do well there's lots of things in our circle of control and i was listening to a book on my drive called uh, vagus nerve and overthinking and so I'd like to share with you some of those ideas and we'll do some of those ideas as we work through this. And I like to create like a bracelet to make a mnemonic um, to remember things. Um, and, and that way, if I make, golly, where's my camera? There it is. Um, so if I make a little bracelet, it just helps me remember. And you don't have to like to wear bracelets. You can hang it somewhere, um, but a wrap bracelet is really cool thing to have. Um, just to remember something important, I find. So I use these all the time. So the first thing that I want to share, I'm going to get it in front of the camera. Ah, there it is, right there, is it's a turtle charm. Can you see it? 
Oh, yay. Thank you for saying you could. Okay. All right. So it's a turtle charm. If you take your thumbs inside your hands and fold your fingers over it, that's called turtle hands in yoga or yoga mudra. And some people say it is a, a way to calm and relax. You can lay them in your lap. You can have them um, when you're walking by your side. You can have them up or down, whatever feels good. I just think it feels like you're kind of giving your um, uh, uh, thumb a little hug. I mean, it doesn't, you know, you're not squeezing it, the uh, life out of it, but you know, just, and so you want to just do that and pause and however you want to take five deep breaths, you can take your five deep breaths, right? Nice and slow, deep breaths. Breaths that feel the whole breathing cavity up with air. And um, they use the all the way to the basement of the breathing cavity. So if you don't know where your diaphragm is and how to do diaphragmatic breath, you put your hands on your belly and then you stick your tongue out like on a hot summer day. And you'll find a part of you that moves, right? And that's the diaphragm. And so you want to breathe that deeply because you want your breath to be big, deep breath, big, deep breath. Okay, and so here's a big Hobermist here that can breathe in and breathe out. <laughs> all right, so five deep breaths. Breath always is the language of the amygdala and uh, your vagus nerve, and it can soothe and calm that part of you down. All right, the next charm on here is to get out and get you some sunshine. We know that nature can help us so many things. And so um, uh, it also helps with our, um, uh, you know, that vitamin D3 that, you know, I know you don't have to stay out long as long as like get a sunburn kind of thing, but being outside, taking the breaths, being out with nature, good stuff, right? Good stuff um, to help you uh, relax. And again, we're relaxing from the inside out with our vagal nerve, a vagus nerve, increasing our vagal tone. All right, another thing, and this is where Pastor Justin can come in. This is a little heart that has got a treble clef on it, and it says sing. Um, and so uh, here we go, Pastor Justin, tell them about how you can take a song and meow it out. So in our uh, crazy little household, um, when we are particularly stressed, we go for a car ride. Um, but we, uh, it's either Demi Lovato, I think, who sings Sorry Not Sorry. You may know that song, um, but to sing it in the language of cat. And so we meow it. And um, I won't do it right now because we're recording. But anyway, you can <laughs> we cannot get through the song without just bursting in laughter. And and it it literally you can almost not tangentially it, the, the release of tension is palpable because we're contained. It's the three of us. There is no shame in being silly together. Um I mean, Carrie does the high parts. I do the rap parts. Everett's in the background. So it legit is one of our taking a song, any song that, and it could be any random song. The funnier the song, the better. But it's the cat part that is is just the absolute silly that that really says, you know what? <laughs> we are all right. We are singing in the language of cat in the car going down the road. Um, and it just kind of resets I don't. I won't say it resets the vagal nerve, but it resets our spirits. Often, whenever we we feel pretty tightly bound, it's like a massage. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's if you ever talk about cat, that's what she's talking about. Yeah, and so like that's what we're talking about. All of these things massage the vagus vagus nerve. So because it runs down through the throat and the voice box, it's right next door. See that vibration is like you know giving it a little like it's okay, you are right. You know, and that vagus nerve calms down. Um, my books even said that's why singing hymns in church may be relaxing for some folks. It's being there and singing um, can uh, be helped. So you can sing your favorite hymn. You can sing your favorite song. Um, but sing, you know, sing, sing, sing. Um, and then along those same lines is an idea called Brahmari breath in yoga or hummingbee breath. So there is a little B on here too, um, to remember to do that hum. Um, so uh, somebody was even, I was telling them about this, they were saying, oh, is that why the monks chant? Yeah, that ohm thing or what, you know, that uh, that's all good, right? That's vibrational uh, therapy. So with humming breath, you breathe in and you breathe out with a hum. And when your breath runs out, you stop. <laughs> 
And then you can breathe in and go another round and you can breathe in and go another round. You can do three rounds recommended, but I've taken uh, courses before we, we did stuff like 16 rounds and we did it over uh, four weeks and it's supposed to be a really excellent way to tackle headaches. Um, but it, again, it's so very calming and relaxing because it actually is, you know, giving a little tickle, a little bit of love to your vagus nerve, which is that part you're down here into the throat. All right, the next charm on the bracelet is your um, laughter, which you've already heard uh, Pastor Justin say that the meow singing, oh, la, it says laugh on the charm. Um, and uh, so my fun story for you is um, that yesterday I was talking to someone who had an argument with her husband, which wasn't very funny. But the funny thing was she had told her husband she was getting in the shower and she had taken off every stitch of clothing and she was about to get in the shower and he came in and he had this argument her and she was completely naked and she she could she couldn't understand how he could keep like in this angry mode and her being there with not a stitch of clothing on right you know and um that does sound pretty funny and i think she finally just said how how can you be so mad look at me i have no clothes on you know like and then i think he finally cracked the smile and they started laughing a little bit right but so you think about those funny things that happened we were telling stories about um like uh my uh one of my yogis here that i'm pointing to where we just did some yoga uh she had new house and has a skink that is her laundry helper like where and she is not really excited about her neighbor and um and so she uh i was telling her our skink family story is when my daughter was uh she was um two and a half and she was upstairs in the bathroom and and all of a sudden I heard mom I'm not alone in here <laughs> I'm like okay and I tiptoe up the stairs because we also had our Noah who was a brand new little baby in the crib trying to take a nap oh y'all there was skink in the bathroom that was truly like the snake with legs right a big old thing and i'm supposed to try to catch this thing right you know uh and so yeah mom i'm not alone in here <laughs> okay and so you know chase ensues i get into a nervous panic like i mean i am sweating like stinky sweat right like i got i i chase him around there was crib i'm like i can't do it i can't do it if i pull the tail it'll come off i can't do it i'm calling my husband and i'm saying you got to come home you got it i don't ever call my husband you, you got to come home and you got to get the skink and then of course at the office it was like yeah you got to go home and catch a skink you know <laughs> because there were several people trying to have a baby um, at that time and had those phone calls that said the temperature is just right you have to come home you know so uh but you know, that makes you laugh what are your skink stories right what are your stories about arguments maybe where you had no clothing on uh so yeah so that's um laughter and then a chair pose or chair uh, a chair charm rather is to remind you to sit down and take a time out. So do that right now, just right in the middle of our uh, fun, just feel where your body is connecting to your seat. I mean, if you like to close your eyes, I mean, it, you don't have to, but I invite you to look within and just feel where you're, how you're seated in the chair. What's touching the floor? Pastor Justin on one of our first outings helped me go to Walmart and find a step stool so I could have my feet touching something when I was sitting in the chair, right? You know, like, I mean, so yeah, so feel connected and that's the way to ground, right? If you're ever spinning, get outside and just on your bare feet, put your feet on the ground and feel God's good earth, right? Um, and that's a calming thing for the, the vagus nerve. Um, there's just a few more charms, relationships we've already described, and this has got little people on it, holding hands and in a row, thinking about our family and our social networks that are supportive for us. This is a blue bead to remember that cold water. You splash it on your face. Um, you take a cold shower. I, I'm sorry, I can't uh, investigate that one for you, but, but you know, people do those polar bear punches for a reason because it is uh, relaxing, believe it or not, to, to shock the body and then to um, uh, feel better after, I guess. But the cold water on the face is something I could do or just even drinking a cold glass of water can help you slow down and calm. Yoga is a good uh, choice. And praying is a good choice. Oh, there's a I love yoga charm and a prayer charm. So um, we are, uh, let's see, I've been going for 12 plus nine is how many? 12 plus nine is 21. 
I've got just a couple more minutes. All right, so let's um, sit up tall and let's just try a few things that we could do in the chair. All right, so you can take your hands out to the side, breathe them up over your head, and you can exhale and bring them down. All right, I, I, I do what your wings can do. There you go, breathing in and breathing out. Some yogis call that a, um, a umbrella breath, which is great for a rainy day. And some yogis call it um, a butterfly breath. So you can breathe your wings up and breathe your wings down, right? And that works better back here. Woohoo! Breathing in and breathing out. Yeah. Um, another great strategy for uh, when you have time in your chair is to do some things that you play with your hands. And so we're going to do uh, some other things like a flower breath where you breathe hands open and exhale and close. Breathe them open, but then start with your thumb and open like the petals are going one by one. And then exhale as you bring the thumb as the last, right? So first breath in as you open the flower petals, exhale as you close, and then try it the opposite way. Start with your pinky and see if you can do it where you fold the thumb in. Yeah, you can also touch the finger to uh, the thumb and you can do the middle finger, the ring finger and the um, little pinky finger and you can say, Jesus loves me, Jesus loves me, Jesus loves me, Jesus loves me. You can whisper it. You can just think it and touch. And whisper, Jesus loves me. 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 Jesus loves me, Jesus loves me. All right, um, so there's lots of things that are within your uh, ability to um, wrap your uh, love and arms around to, that can help you um, work that vagus nerve, which helps you um, uh, which helps you be more confident, more calm, more ready to think things through in a clear and um, uh, you know, a rational way. Uh, I always think too, it helps you to be more vibrant and more robust, which is what we're called to do with the light and the heat of our spirit. Um, let's try this last one and then I'll turn you back over and you can have uh, whatever's the next and a good night uh, that follows. But if you'll just now just take your nose and turn it as far as it'll go over your shoulder and just measure what you see. And then come back to center and then take it and just measure what you see. All right, that's your pretest. All right, and then come back to center and just take your eyes where you go to your um, 10 o'clock or your um, two o'clock and don't move your face, just your eyeballs. And then slide down to the opposite. So that would be like four or uh, what is that, eight-ish? I'm not good with numbers. All right, so you just gonna go like side to side on a diagonal. All right, up you go to the higher number or on the clock rather face and then lower number on the clock face. One more time. And then try it where you go to the opposite number. So if you were at 10, now you're at uh, two and slide down. Again, let's do that five sets of uh, looking up and looking down and trying your best not to move anything but the eyeballs in the sockets. It's great for the eye muscles to do this bit of yoga. We often think about 
you know, working our eye muscles as a part of our strengthening repertoire. But good stuff. All right, you got five sets in, you think? All right, and then take your gaze and now see where your gaze will go. One direction. Anybody got anything different, same? What did you notice, Sarah? I feel like I turned my head backwards. Right? <laughs> so I was like, oh, look, there's the rest of the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, so do it with the other direction and one may be more or less or the same. It may be the same for you. And don't, be, don't be upset if it didn't work for you. But this concept is you're just rotating those eyes in the socket massage the vagus nerve, which runs through the neck, which is where we have so much tension and tightness. And you may have just relaxed the nerve, which is in relaxing you. I'm not gonna, not gonna lie. Also, when we were doing the back and forth, I moved my contact off my eyeball. So, well, uh, I'm better uh, now. I'm better. Then get you this shine waiver. Sorry. Yeah, just, Sorry. It's all good. Yoga is also, you know, anytime you move, you can hurt yourself. <laughs> I also can't seem to click my thing right, but that's okay. <laughs> okay. Well, y'all, that's what I had for tonight. I hope that there was something that you can hold on to. And I just wanted to show you, uh, Sister Davia says that you should always take a half a day out of every week that is just you time. Like not structured, not planned, this you. Half a day, either it's a morning of a day or an afternoon of a day, your choice, but every week you should do that. And then every month, she says, you should take a full day that is just you. I mean, that's just you day for your health, for your self, self for body care. And then she says you should make sure there's a week of every year. And I know Pastor Justin would say you could use the six month mark or the quarterly remark, but you could also look at that. Just look at it on that day off of the month and just see how am I doing, right? Just check in. It doesn't have to be a big old deal. Don't make it a big old hairy deal. If you make it a big old hairy deal, you ain't gonna do it, right? Make something that is doable for you. Just keeping that in your bathroom or somewhere that you look regularly where you do your devotions or your quiet time um, and just look and say, oh, wait, I am doing a little better here as this month rolls to an end. You know, hey, wait. Oh, no, this is slid. I'm not getting enough rest, you know, and if and you're thinking about rest in particular, y'all rest is resistance. Rest as resistance by Tricia Hershey, who's in y'all uh, uh, Atlanta area. She does something called napministry.com. Uh, she goes into the whole thing about capitalism and and how work and productivity is what we think is success and and how that's uh, that's that's what we're kind of like anchored to. I'm through saying it now. Anybody hee haw fan? <laughs> <laughs> I love hee haw. Penny Pearl who had the tag. <laughs> oh my gosh! I need to again. <laughs> I'm still on it. Thank you so people. much. Thank you so much, Dieta. So we, um, I think a lot of y'all met Dieta at assembly, but Dieta, will you be willing to share kind of what kind of the scope of your internship thing is and like the wellness pieces that you're working with and, and kind of the, the variety of ministries? Right. So I am a yoga teacher. I'm training to be a yoga therapist. Yoga therapy is just another branch of, of, of the fund where you really get more individual and have goals. And you can have small groups with similar diagnoses and things like that. And so I'm trying to use the tools that I've learned, like this tool about the vagus nerve and how it works to remind us all the small little things that we can do every day to make us mighty and strong and be able to save the day like we're designed to do by our Lord. Um, so my primary focus is roster leader uh, wellness. Um, and so I'm helping uh, with the respite and renewal grants, like when people are ready to, and I'm having some conversations soon with folks that are ready to reenter the working world. And we want to make sure they have, you know, sustainable wellness uh, covenant, uh, not that it's official, like it's not something Pastor Justin is checking off, but it's like, do they have an accountability piece? Have they thought through a plan so that it's li less likely that they'll be back in a burnout, crispy, toasty stage anytime in the near future? 
um, then that the byproduct of that is then that we're going to create healthier congregations because as we said modeling is such the way we all learn kids are just always watching everything right and they're learning everything by watching carefully so um, we then have healthier more vibrant con congregations that can get out and do the mission work that that our our congregation that God is wanting us to do in the world sharing the love that he has shares with us so um, I'm doing that through faith formation opportunities. I'm doing, I was also at a firm with Sister Sarah. I um, am going to a confirmation camp. Uh, it's the Synod confirmation camp, right? And uh, end of September, I've also got a congregational piece helping with Redeemer, uh, doing some ministries um, there the week before that. Um, I'm doing things in my own community uh, to practice, you know, uh, um, I've worked with a nonprofit called um, Koinonia, which uh, um, is that Greek word for community and how we need each other. And we did a Justice Academy. So one of my um, check marks, you know, is to work on social justice issues. And so we did that with uh, Justice Academy this summer. Um, what am I missing, Pastor Justin? Oh, I helped with grant writing with one of our synods to get more respite and renewal funds for roster leaders. I'm going to Lutheridge to help there. Um, and anywhere and any place that somebody will sit down and wants to talk, like if you want to talk sometime, I love to talk and uh, share with, uh, listen to your story and how like uh, Pastor Sylvia, you're back, you know, if uh, as we get, and I thought about even doing like a little journal type article to post about back to school and some back health kind of ideas. Um, I'm going to make a bookmark for the Welka convention coming up since I can't be there. Just, uh, Oh, and I got a whole thing. Sister Sarah, I didn't know that Dazzling Bouquet song. Oh, I love that. You know, mine is a church where everybody's welcome. I know that's true because I got in the door, right? You know, so to, to do uh, like different flowers and, you know, flowers have a language and uh, moving with yoga with that and being that, that part of the bouquet you're designed to be. So, yeah. yeah. Dazzling it. Ooh. We're building it yeah. while we fly it. We are building it while we fly it because this is what we're trying uh, as far as an internship of word and service um, as an internship hasn't been done before. So we're excited that we can pilot it and learn as we do it and breathe while we do it. Um, I, 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 as, as, as Deanna and I work together, I'm also, and you all who've worked with me now these years know that I'm a co-teacher and a co-learner. And so in my physical therapy, I have incorporated some of the breathing exercises because Dieta said, don't see, don't consider PT as torture, but as a meditative session. So when my physical therapy, when I was stretching and I closed my eyes and I was breathing deeply, my PT person was like, are you okay, sir? Are you okay? I'm like, yes, I'm just meditating so I can stretch for it. Okay, well, I thought he's going to pass out. No, ma'am, I'm just in a good spot. I said, I'm not clenching my jaw. I'm relaxed. And she was like, well, yeah. So so I, I think the, 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 with incorporating wellness, it doesn't have to be hard. It actually shouldn't be. But it's something I think that it's, it's I, what I appreciate about what Dieta brings to ministry, especially with rostered ministers, is that it's applicable 